I'm not here to glorify my past. The past is the past. If we live in the past, we never step to the present. Life is a present. It's given to us by our Creator. You know, I was baptized a Seventh-day Adventist. I wasn't baptized in lemon juice. I actually was baptized in holy water. I'm just a human being. I've never seen a human being with angel wings. I figured they'd be up there flying instead of down here with all of us dying. So I want to let you know it's just an honor to be here with God's children. See, I'm here for the last, the least, and the lost because that's me. I'm the last. I'm the least. I'm the lost. I'm the uh, demoniac running around the cemetery in Capernaum, Capernaum, just waiting for Jesus to call the demons out, take the chains off. I'm Zacchaeus up in the trees just waiting for Jesus to walk by and say, come on down, today I sup with you. I was the chief of all sinners. As you can tell, Nico the dragon, it's not a very popular name in the uh, body of Christ, the dragon. So I'm just called Nico Hill now. You know, baptized a Seventh-day Adventist, going to church. I came from a very, let's just say, unusual childhood where violence and abuse was its foundation. So it led to a young man chasing broken promises and shattered dreams, just looking for any attention. You can't worship Monday through Friday, go to church on Saturday, then come home to lies and abuse and affliction and addiction and brokenness. It doesn't sit well when you're a child and you're singing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. So I left home at a young age. I pursued martial arts. That was my sanctuary. That was my religion. That was my peace. But it wasn't my peace of mind. See, there is no peace of mind in a nine-to-five grind if we do not have Jesus Christ on our side. You want to repeat that with me? There is no peace of mind in this nine-to-five grind if we don't have Jesus Christ on our side. Now I want to know that you're awake. There is no peace of mind in that nine-to-five grind if we don't have Jesus Christ on our side. i got to tell you something. It is such an honor to be here with you. See, the only difference between us is I'm asking God for forgiveness and the distance. You are all God's children. And this is not my story. This is his story. And each and every one of you have your own testimony. Each and every one of you have your own story. That is the existence to the evidence of Jesus Christ. See, Satan kicks in the door to take us. Jesus waits patiently outside that same door, knocking. Can you hear him knocking? Knocking. So we open that door with our own free will, and he steps in and he saves us. The great controversy is in our left and right eye, in our heart in our free will. See, the perfect storm takes a perfect love. We're all on the sea of Galilee. We're all in a storm. We all know that. How many believe we're in a spiritual battlefield right now? If you do, raise your hands. So if we're in a spiritual battle and we're willing to be foot soldiers for the body of Christ, I read the Bible. I'm sure you have too. I might have cheated a few of the books. I know there's 66 books, the beginning and the end, Genesis and Revelation, all the biblical characters. See, the world says to you, what can you do for me? How soon can you do it? And what do you want in return? 
What can you do for me? How soon can you do it? And what do you want in return? And Jesus says, no, that's not what it's about. What it's about is knowing that I died for each and every one of you. And I'm willing to give you the gift of the living water, the gift of salvation, which none of you can ever even earn. See, Jesus was nailed to the cross, one hand to the right, and one hand to the left, for all of us. Can you feel the Holy Spirit in this place right now? Can you feel the Holy Spirit in your house right now? See, this is just the hospital of hope. It's not brick and mortar. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's on the outside. It matters on what's in the inside. God's children are in the inside of the hospital of hope. And there is hope with each and every one of you. And he has his hands on each and every one of you. If you don't know it, you don't feel it, you can't preach it, you can't say it, then guess what? It's not true. But I'm here to tell you. Two years and two months ago, I was 80 pounds lighter. I was about as white as these walls. And I was a crystal meth fiend. I was bodyguarding for the darkness. I was kidnapped by the darkness. I was adopted by the enemy and Satan, by my own free will. And I reached out to the demonic angels, not the guardian angels. But Jesus loved me anyway. The chances we make and the choices we take determine our fate. Say that with me. The chances that we take, the choices that we make, determine our fate. Now say it so the angels can hear you. The chances that we take, the choices that we make, they do determine our fate. Now there's Jesus, and he's got his left, and he's got his right arm out, and he's nailed to the cross. And it wasn't the pain or the humiliation of being beaten and spit on by the very children that he created. It was a broken heart that killed our father. It was a broken heart because he became the sin that we can never be forgiven of. And then he bowed his head and he said, it is finished. Do you feel his arms around you? Can you feel the heavenly angels that protect you? Do you know it's such an honor, such a privilege to be a child of God? That is your identity. Is you're all children of God. You're all children of God of God. See, Jesus is God. Jesus is his word in flesh. His word in flesh. God's word in flesh is Jesus Christ. So he can deal with our flesh. Remember, I told you I was the chief of all sinners. I was the demoniac. I was Zacchaeus. I was Lazarus. You can be the woman at the well. Okay. And he offered every one. The same thing that he offers you. The gift of living water. The ability to be born again within the body of Christ. See, you may be saved, but that doesn't mean you're safe. We've got to be willing to serve. We've got to be willing to go out and tell the good news. We can't get comfortable and fall asleep in the pews. We've got to go out and spread the three angels' message. It's so easy. Jesus died for you. He died for me too. He loves you. He loves me too. And he's coming back again. It doesn't matter. He's the chief. He is the El Jefe. He is the shot caller. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is our father. That is our identity. We're too busy. We're looking at the, at the sidewalks to see the stars. We don't look up to see the gospel. God's story in the stars. We're too busy looking front, back, and side that we don't look up and see the gospel in the stars. We're so busy with the bells and the lights and the attraction and the distractions and the brokenness and the darkness and the, 
the enemy and the deception that we don't listen when the Holy Spirit is speaking. Do you listen when the Holy Spirit is speaking? Do you hear when Jesus is whispering his grace, his forgiveness, and his living water to each and every one? It doesn't matter how dark, how down, how broken you are. He doesn't care. He died for each and every one of us. And you are all special, so special. So there I was, 80 pounds lighter. I did a string of films, Raw Target, Deathmatch, Invitation to Die, Forced to Kill, Bloodsport 2, romantic comedies, right? Hollywood, lights, camera, action. But I didn't have peace of mind. See, I didn't understand that peace of mind only came from Jesus Christ. So I was looking for it in all the wrong places. I was adopted by the darkness, kidnapped by the enemy, but God had his hand on me anyway. So after a string of films, a couple of championships in the cage, my own television series, Wine, Women, and Song. Thought I had it all. But I had nothing at all. That's the deception. That's the lies. That's the delusion. That's the enemy. I would not listen when the Holy Spirit was speaking. But he never stopped. So I went from all the different inanimate objects like championship belts and wine, women, and song and Things just started happening. My mom passed away. I lost my television series. My band broke up. And I was saying to myself, where's the peace of mind? Oh, I know. You know you hate yourself so much, Nico. So I look in my mirror. That's my assassin. It always forecasts my true enemy. That was me. This is not the battlefield. There's demonic angels everywhere. There's righteous guardian angels to protect us in this battle that we're in. And oh, by the way, Jesus Christ wins the war. So Satan is going to try to take as many casualties as he can in this battle. But not one person here is going to allow him, right? Right? Just checking. So there I was, and the only thing I hated worse than myself was drugs. And I thought, what better way to kill myself than to become a drug addict? Do you see how the enemy works? Yes, it's my free will. Yes, it's the choices I make. They determine my fate, but it's the free will that God will step away from. He'll allow us to go through the consequences that we're going to go through, but he'll never let go of you. He'll reach you when you're in jail. He'll reach you when you're in prison. He'll reach you when you're sick. He'll reach you when you're happy. He'll reach you wherever you are. He'll reach you in the neighborhood. He'll reach you whatever you do. He'll never stop talking. But here's the thing. Are we willing to listen? Because I'm here to tell you, I was not willing to listen. I was miss me. I'm in the red light district without a watch. So I became a drug addict on crystal meth. You know, Satan knows our poison. I got high one night for 10 years. And when I woke up, I lost everything I had. I was the walking dead. I was spiritually dead. Now, I thought because I was a bodyguard for the darkness, for daydreamers and gunslingers and dope dealers and I thought, well, I'm keeping women from being beaten, and I'm keeping kids from being molested, but I'm a drug fiend. I'm bodyguarding for the darkness, but hey, man, I'm more righteous than they are. See what a lie that is? 
But Jesus never stopped reaching out for me. It wasn't after I was cleaned up and transformed and, and converted that he said, okay, you're my child. I'll take you in now. Now I'm the prodigal son coming off of that mat. Holy Spirit saying, get up. You've been a citizen of sin for too long. Time to come home. So there I was in a halfway house environment. And I said, I'm out of this place. I'm done. I'm going to OD. So I had the drugs in my hand. And then I said to myself, gosh, this is going to be your legacy. What's underneath your bed, what's in the closet, what's in your head, that's going to be your legacy. I thought, man, I can't let that be. I don't care about me. I just care about the people that are going to find me. Because it doesn't matter what we say. It's what we do. But that was going to be my legacy. And then I heard a voice. He said, can you hear me now? Do I have your attention now? And the Holy Spirit said to me, here I am, God, but once again I will choose to stand on my own. The innocent cries from my mother's womb to this fallen, beaten child that kneels before you that slowly gave away pieces of his very own soul. And your beautiful colors, they drift in and out of my mind and your heavenly music plays, Lord, but come on, the truth is, for me, as you can see, at this moment, it's out of time. So please don't ask me why. For when I lay down my head tonight, I know I will never awake to breathe, walk, or cry. So take me away to a place I can be. Take me away to a place that you prepared, that you said that I can never leave. Because I remember once when you told me to go and find that wise man. And when I do sit down and ask him, did he really have a purpose, a plan for me to do? How long before I was to realize the wise man was in your word, in your truth, in your light, in your sacrifice? And it's always and forever been you. Yet here I am, God. Four corners and darkness is all that my eyes can see. I realize this is my true destiny. So please have mercy on a fallen child like me. See, I hear the voices, and I feel the chill, and Satan taunts me, and the enemy haunts me, and the terror of a new day is all that keeps me alive, for I realize I only exist at this moment, in this place, for my own suicide. Yet here I am, God, and you never, ever, 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 ever left me alone. I can hear your angels singing. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, turn around, my child. It's time to go home. So please ask me why, for when I lay down my head tonight, I will look into your eyes and I will reply, I cannot wait to wake up and cry. For you are my before and you are my after. You dried all of my tears. You carry me in the palm of your hand. And I know there'll be a day when I will see you again. And this time in heaven's time, it will never end. Yet when we all walk down those streets tonight, how many of us will stay and put on a look that only comes when you feel all your hope, all your dreams are forever gone? For no matter how hard we try, only you know the real reasons why, but have all our dreams, all our wants, all our hopes, all our needs, all our desires been pushed aside and one by one become denied. Tell me, how does one prepare for those eyes of a cold, hungry, distant, dark, lonely, and confused stare? Are those the windows of everyone else's soul that will speak of the frustration, the confusion, and the devastation that once again is in your air? Is this a live and let live world that we're in? Really? Then why will some hurt anyone just to climb to the top? Can we ever understand on that path known as our destruction, the end of all man will be the last stop? Does it matter the stories that you came? Does the ending always have to be the same when those city blocks, those city blocks begin calling out our name? So I'm going to keep asking. 
only for your answer. One right now we desperately need. Can we find peace of mind? Keep our hope alive. For we are your children and we're trying to survive. What is left for us to believe in? And why would someone as perfect as you, creator of everyone and everything, Lord of Lord and King of Kings, why would you take the time to listen? Listen to a broken and lost sinner like me. For is it not all of our children? Why are some left alone on those corners? They're far too young. Is their innocence gone? Can they ever truly belong? It's different faces from different places, but after all these years, we must listen. Do they still cry those same unheard and forgotten tears? And then when we honor the brave, how do we truly thank someone for the lives that they were willing to give? For too soon we will visit another hero's grave. So please tell me, God, I need to know what progress, if any, have we ever truly made? For are we not more than willing to pay the price, but at what cost? If someone ever drops that bomb, then everyone here listening will be gone. And only you, God, know which side won and which side lost. So I will keep asking, only for your answer. One right now we desperately need. Can we find peace of mind? Keep our hope alive. For we are your children and we're trying to survive. What's left for us to believe in? And why would someone as perfect as you, creator of everyone and everything, Lord and Lord and King of Kings, take the time to listen to a sinner like me. And that's when Jesus said, please stop talking. Take the time to just listen. For don't you know by now I am the only reason for each and every one of my children to keep on believing. For when your spirit is weak and you're going to let go, I am the only one with the right, the power, and the will, and the strength to hold on. For your lessons are not yet over, and the struggle for your soul continues on. But you are all of my children. You don't have to leave. No, 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 that's my backup right there. God bless the children in this hospital of hope today. Amen? That little baby's going to get up here and rap in a little bit. And if you all think I'm uh, mistaken or kidding, just wait. You're all going to be standing up in a little bit. I died so each and every one of you could be forgiven. And listen, my angels are singing. And listen, those babies will keep on breathing. And listen. One day on my demand, all the evil you see will be leaving. Then you would join me forever this time in my holy kingdom. But you need to take the time to stop talking. Keep on praying. And when my spirit is speaking, just be still, reverent, and listen. You know, your child has great timing. Because uh, we had a recent event I'm sure you guys have all heard of. Everybody's blaming Jesus Christ. The children that died at Sandy Hook, Connecticut. But I'm here to tell you that the innocence of our children relies on us. The choices we make, the chances we take, determine our fate. When the Holy Spirit is speaking, do we listen? See, how many times can an empty home become an uneasy crowd? And how many times can a silent room in an instant become too loud? How many times can our last memory be a picture that just hangs on the wall? And how many sleepless nights can we awake to no one at all? Right now on the outside looking in, it is all of God's children. And there is a race to bring them in. So I will pray it's the angel of mercy, arms wide open, protect them from the night, Finally do what's just and right. Not the vision of sin that wears the disguise meant to paralyze their young eyes. And the vicious cycle repeats itself over and over and over again. See, right now a young child forgot what it was to smile. Trade in laughter and carefree play. Just satisfied to maybe make it one more day. See, we don't have to be a witness to their tears to know they still cry. No, there but for the grace of God go I, if we dare pass them by. And in our own reflection, we will see the reason why there's sadness left in their eye. For when will you and me and the powers that be finally just sit down and agree? We cannot become desensitized, nor can we ever apologize. No matter how many times they may televise, 
the loss of innocent life. For right now, a young child carries the shame for they don't know their own name or from where they came. And right now on the outside looking in, it's still all of God's children. And there is a race to bring them in. So I will pray once again. It's the angel of mercy, arms wide open. Protect them from the night. Finally do what's just and right. Not the vision of sin that wears a disguise meant to paralyze their young eyes. And the vicious cycle repeats itself over and over and over again. We must always remember for the evil down here to continue to breathe. Another one of God's children may be asked again to leave. So here I am. I'm on my knees. I'm watching life go by. I'm getting high. I'm hoping to die. And I said, God, can you see my tears? Can you hear my prayer? Because if you can, I'm going to cease and desist from this darkness and these lies and this brokenness and this delusion and this deception. See, I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be rich. I just want peace of mind. There's this hole in my heart shaped like a person, and only you can fill it. God sees your tears, and he hears your prayers. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. See, it's not where we're at. It's who we're with. It's not what we took, but what were we willing to give? It's not how we die, but how do we live? God knows your heart. God will reach out through the blood and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and pull you out of anywhere and stand you up if you're willing to be his soldier. How many here today, how many of God's children today are willing to be a foot soldier in his army? Raise your hand. See, I'm so honored to say that I'm one of many God's soldiers. And just like each and every one of you, I am in the continuous battle against the poverty, the sickness, and the sin. But it is now and forever my most honest opinion that none of us before or since have said anything that has not yet been written. So please take a good look at me, and you will see I'm not the one disrespecting. No, on the contrary, I am so, so grateful for all that I've been hearing. And thank you for taking the time to listen. Listen to one of God's soldiers' opinion. See, I know we need to stop our evil ways or we will burn. I know we need to help out the less fortunate, no matter how much or how little money we happen to earn. I know we need to take our time to use our mind. That is a priceless gift just to be able to continue to learn. I know we have to have the power, the strength, the will, the honor, and the resolve to once again wait for our turn. But when we look down, it's the same hard, unforgiving ground. And when we look up the sky in our dreams, that is our ceiling. And sometimes we try to crawl inside and do what's right. And those walls that surround us, they start closing in. We step outside. We need to open up our eyes because the truth is it is robbing and stealing and killing all over this world once again. See, so when my heart keeps beating and that clock keeps ticking and those walls are closing in, I still can't keep from thinking. How can you and I be the generation like Mr. Harry Bay to want to stand and help stop all of this bleeding? See, I know we try to speak our mind, but it seems like no one really cares enough to listen. Man, and it's hard to see how you feel from the inside if you're out there wasting away and you're slowly suffocating. Believe me, I thought I knew who the fingerprints are, but come on, for me it was too incriminating. The powers that be, they can't keep on scheming like they caught each and every one of us sleeping and dreaming. So I will hope and pray there's a change we can all believe in. I know that's the current champion man slogan. Please, God, don't tell me the plan was to leave us weaponless, homeless, and penniless while that evil and corruption's infectious, contagious, and yes, it is sometimes courageous. Some of you, you fought and you died for the right, the land of the free, the home of the brave. That is the promise that you gave us. Not to spend our free time turning colorful pages with a false sense of security. There's a mass crusader or a superhero that's going to care enough one day to save us. 
See, they're charting our legacy, and it is vital. It is critical. It is a 911 stat call how we will be seen throughout our own history. Are they going to say we were left to lies, deception, just another mystery? Are they going to say that we live vicariously through others' weakness and misery? Or sadly, we'll say we simply became our own worst enemy. Or finally, in a cause we can all unite and agree, no matter our background, our faith, or our ethnicity, we're the very reason today, with the Holy Spirit, we continue to be free. See, Jesus taught us we must speak the truth or say nothing at all. I promise you it's never a shame to get down on your knees, ask God for forgiveness, and have to crawl. But we must trust ourselves and others just to let go and fall. But we have to have the faith, the courage, the strength, the will, the honor, and the resolve to dust ourselves off, stand tall, and wait for our true Father's call. See, the enemy radioed in. They said that they already won. They said there's never been a place called heaven, and for us there's no point in going on. But God's soldiers, in the battle against sin, we can never take the time to listen to the ill-gotten information from the very king of deception, for he does not want you around for this divine intervention. He doesn't want you to know we've got the cure right here in God's word for this worldly infection. So let's just keep on marching in that righteous direction. For yes, we all fall to temptation, but we stand so strong, united in our salvation. And this can never be ruled by any dark nation. So just like it was in the beginning, so it will be in the end. You will fall again, angel of sin. So while my heart keeps beating, the clock keeps ticking, and the walls seem to be closing in, I still can't keep from thinking. How can you and I be the generation to one day stop all the bleeding? See, so you need to get off the social network sometimes. MySpace, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You need to listen when the Holy Spirit is speaking. We need to put down our fists and our weapons and all the hatred. We need to have a worldwide truce. Stop the unnecessary and vicious beating. We need to remember our earthly mother, father, and the heavenly father, and the heart, and the soul, and the spirit. Each and every one of you have been so blessed to be given. And right here today, each and every one of us make a promise to start the healing. And that will be the one way, one day, we will be the generation, men, women, and children, to help stop the bleeding. For always remember... No heart would ever beat. No one sitting in these pews, including myself, would ever even breathe. If in our final hour of need, Jesus Christ did not make the choice to leave his heavenly throne, pick up the cross on Calvary, and for each and every one of us, choose to slowly bleed. And all he ever asks in return is that in him, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, we continue to believe. Can I get amen? amen? I know you're all praying, right? Here's my testimony in a minute and a half. And then we're going to get up for a minute and stretch. So be ready. See, I can see the righteous and the scandalous and the frightened, and the hopeless. We can see the righteous, and the scandalous, and the frightened, and the hopeless. Yeah, I was born, word, deed, honor, and bond. I'm supposed to stay and fight this enemy till the battle is done. But why am I so afraid to say what's on my mind? So I do what I'm told every single time. See, that's me. I'm hiding in them shadows all day long. I can't make a move until his light is gone. Now I'm beaten. I'm broken. I'm all on my own. So I will make the only choice I can never come back from. So if today is the day that I'm chosen to die who's going to stop what they're doing and take the time to cry if we have nothing to believe in that would be the reason we've got tears in our eyes God taught us never to be sad or alone we see through his eyes his heart his soul I chose a different road to be on that saw I'm steady waiting for his righteous call so I will keep praying for the gangsters doing time and our brave soldiers fighting on the front line whether we're up in that mansion and we're living the dream or we're down on the street we've got nothing to eat whether we worship that almighty dollar or we're preaching with or without that car for we were all born word, deed, honor, and bond. We're going to stay and fight the enemy till the battle is done. And now you guys can say with me, and God said, keep holding on. I will keep 
Your spirit's strong. You are so ready for the path that you are on. And he is forever singing your song. And I heard God say, keep holding on. He will keep your spirit strong. You are so ready for the path that you are on. And we are forever singing your song. Now say it with some swag in the hospital of hope right today. Keep holding on. God will keep your spirit strong. You are so ready for the path that you are on. And he is forever singing your song. One more time. Keep holding on. God will keep the spirit strong. We are so ready for the path that we are on. And he is forever singing our song.